Let's recap what we discussed uh, when we were relating linear motion with angular motion. In um, linear motion, the associated uh, displacement is xb minus xa. In angular motion, we can find the displacement by finding the change in theta, theta b minus theta a. The straight line from a to b is the displacement in linear space. This can also be found, but we're not going to be using it at the present moment. Instead, we will be focusing on the arc length, which is depending on the radius multiplied by the change in angle. So this side will be the linear motion, and this side will be the uh, angular motion. The velocity is given by the change in x over the change in time and an equivalent equation for the circular motion will be given by the change in theta over the change in time. You can basically use also the derivative. Things get a little bit interesting when we get to acceleration. Now, acceleration for the straight line motion is basically the change in velocity over the change in time or similarly you can basically say acceleration d squared x over dt squared alpha will be given by uh, d omega d t and I'm sure you can also note that that will basically be d squared theta over dt squared. And that's your alpha. Let's dive a little bit deeper into the uh, acceleration. Something that you're swinging around a circle in that particular direction, the object would have to be kept inwards by centripetal force and some of you might also be thinking when the string breaks the force that is basically that apparent force that you actually think is going to be pushing it up is actually called the centrifugal force now this force basically doesn't exist if you think about it the object is not going to be flying straight that way it will just try to go tangential to the circular path now let's go back to, to talking about the acceleration. The angular acceleration is given by the change in angular velocity over the change in time. Here are the accelerations that you need to think about in circular motion. The tangential acceleration, I'm just going to call it AT, and centripetal, I'm just going to call it AC. The centripetal acceleration is actually given by omega squared r. The tangential acceleration will be given by angular acceleration multiplied by the radius. This is the same as the change in velocity over the change in time because this is acceleration. So the total acceleration of this object as it goes around the circle will basically be given by the tangential acceleration plus the centripetal acceleration where tangential acceleration is always perpendicular to the centripetal acceleration. Let's say we've got three masses that are hung on a string. I'm sure you can actually agree with me to say all of them will cover the full revolution in the same time. So the angular velocity is the same. Okay. Okay, now we're going to look at the mechanical energy. Okay. And again, we're going to relate the linear motion with the angular motion. You need to remember that the mass 
equivalence in rotational motion is rotational inertia. In calculations, for linear motion, we will literally just use that mass m, and for rotational motion, we will use what we refer to as rotational inertia, which is I. Now, in linear motion, we would say that the kinetic energy Ek is half mv squared, and in the equivalence of that equation in angular motion will basically be Ek, which is equal to half I instead of mass. And then what is the equivalence of velocity in angular space? That will actually be your omega. So that will be omega squared. So please just uh, note that slide difference. Similarly, you can basically talk again about Ep, which is the potential energy. What is mg or a x right so that will be your um, potential energy now in rotational motion we normally just say ep is equal to m we know the equivalence for mass is basically the rotational inertia and what is the acceleration rotational acceleration or angular acceleration we use alpha for that and then what do we change in, in linear motion, we change the position x, and then in rotational motion, we know that we are changing the angle. So that will actually be theta. So for power, at the rate of doing work, right, I'm just going to put just the potential energy there as max divided by the time. We are actually multiplying the force by x over t. For the rotational motion, we can again do the same thing and say power is equal to torque multiplied by angular velocity. Remember, torque is the force multiplied by the perpendicular distance. Because this is a dot product, you can see this is the force times distance cos of the angle between them. Let's talk about the period and the frequency. When you have an object that goes around a circular path, let's say it starts somewhere there at 12 o'clock, a period, T, is the time that it takes to complete a full revolution, and the units for that will be in seconds. Similarly, we can also look at how many times the object rotates or completes full revolutions in one second. This is the number of cycles in one second. If, a, if an object revolves three times around the cycle in two minutes, calculate its period and frequency. So now we'll start first with the period. Period is basically the time, and what is the time? We said that it's two minutes, and two minutes is two times uh, 60 seconds. And how many cycles did it take? It took three, so that will basically be 40 seconds to complete one full revolution. What about the frequency? The frequency is the reciprocal of the period. The number of cycles, which is three, divided by uh, the time it took to complete those cycles, uh, which is basically 2 times 60 seconds, 0 0.025 hertz.